Good evening, humans. It is the dark and stormy night around here. In case you hadn't noticed, I was the one who summoned the tornado warning. And you should fear me. For some reason, I don't know where this character is. <clears throat> so I'm going to get out of it in a second. I call across the ether to the fellow evil spooky creature that is called many things. One of them being Paul. Paul. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> I'm also spooky. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. We're extra creepy because there apparently is some echoing going on. Ooh, spooky echoes. Ooh, oh, that's not intentional. <laughs> uh, okay, if that continues being an issue, I'll try to fix it. <laughs> uh, welcome to Stunt the Artist. A very extra spooky and stormy night edition. Uh, yeah, as, as I mentioned in the chat briefly, we, we had a tornado warning here. It is just starting to rain, but... Oh, it's because... Oh, the, the sound issues on your end. Okay, well, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'm fine with the extra creepy echo. Uh, anyway, so, as long as it's not us. <sighs> okay. Uh, yeah, it was, it's, uh, luckily we were not hit by a tornado right at start time, because it was like, tornado warning, 7.45 to 8 p.m. And I'm like, gee, that's right when I start. Yeah. So. Anything to stop us. Yes. Yeah, that they were luckily powerless to stop us, apparently. Or I feel like that's that's jinxing it, because if I say powerless to stop us, I feel like the power's gonna go out, so I'm gonna I'm gonna knock <laughs> on wood. words. Oof, okay. <laughs> uh, welcome to Spooky Stump the Artist. Um, my name is Roxanne. I am your librarian and also artist. Paul is I'm over Paul, there. Paul, I'm a guy. Paul's a guy, he's also the artist. No, but neither one of us is the artist formerly known as Prince, who is actually called Prince no. again. Uh, anyway, so because it's an extra spooky edition, spooky! Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> it's spooky and, and I can't do transitions correctly. <laughs> It's terrifying! <laughs> it's terrifying! The low production quality is absolutely <laughs> terrifying. I do not have a degree in this. Um, <laughs> we're going to be doing another horror-themed creation, as as indicated by the evil overlords, who keep popping up like this. <laughs> Spookily! Spookily! Um, last week, we had... Um, what was it? Hot, hot, oh no, I've already forgotten. Hot, we had a horror comedy, uh, so a bit more of a lighter fare. We're, this time we're gonna try for something spooky. We'll see how it actually goes. Cause this time we're not gonna be starting with the protagonist. This time we are starting with the monster. The monster. The monster. Ooh. Haunting your dreams. Blah, 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 blah. blah. All right, so uh, we have not done this particular um, creation method, uh, I believe, on any of the recorded episodes. So what it is is that there's a randomly generated list of animals and also body parts. So it's um, I don't literally it's, creating a monster. If we're literally, it's not going to be okay. I'm pretty mm -hmm. much guaranteed that. Last time we did it, we came up with some really horrible. It was maybe stuff. the worst thing we've ever done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and toddler notwithstanding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, yikes. All right. So let's do. Are we starting with a? Uh, let's start with a body. A body part. So that's a combination of humanoid and animal body parts. The first body part. For humanoid is feet. Feet. Okay. Humanoid, humanoid feet. First animal part is a blackbird. So are we doing blackbird feet? We can. Okay. I feel like that's right. sufficiently monstery. Alright, I'm just gonna dive right in. Yeah, okay. And I got eyes. So 
So I got eyes and also tick. Tick don't really have eyes, but I think once you get those feeded, I'm gonna put in some like swollen tick abdomen and it's gonna be awful. And then I'll start giving it eyes. Abdomen. Yeah, no, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be maybe on the abdomen I can do that. But yeah, no, it's it's already it's gonna spooky. be bad. I'm gonna just quick just pencil in an ovoid here. Already I'm gonna go with some just some classic monster vertical eye work. I need to make sure that it's it's it's, it's distended and gorged with, with blood in a non-sexual manner. <laughs> I'm gonna just just pencil in that it's red, so to remind myself to give it some 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 blurb. So, I mean, we're already off to a good start. That we got some creepy creepy I mean, bird feet, claws, and blood sucker. So. Yeah, it's it's already not good. All right. Okay. Yeah, you can you can keep those feet in there. I just I've got we got a lot of other body to go. Yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna head it up. Mouth. Okay. Mouth. I got a okay. What kind of a mouth? What kind of a mouth? I got Blackbird again, which I'm not a fan of. No, listen. Alfred Hitchcock did the birds already. Yeah, we we got we gotta gotta, gotta do something else. Budgerigar. I don't know what that is. I think that's a bird. <laughs> oh boy, you guys get to see me Google a thing. Straight up. It is. Oh, it's a budgie. It's a budgie. No, I think this is too cute. But I don't know. Just just the mouth part. Hmm. Okay, I, we could. All right. Clearly, it wants me to do a beak. So I guess we're doing I a beak. I think you can do a beak. I can do a beak. So the budgie... It's got kind of this sort of thing going on. And then I'll do the creepy bird tongue thing. <laughs> yes, the bird lip. Right, I'm gonna hold off on the second leg until. Okay. Okay. Um, you you need you need another body part. I need another body part. You also got eyes. Uh oh. Okay. This thing can see you. You got whale eyes. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so like way back here. Uh, wherever you where, wherever the monster is speaking to you. Uh, question okay. from the audience. Can you remind the audience of the setup? Are yins drawn together or separate? How does this work? We are using an online uh, program called Anki.io where we are uh, drawing at the same time from completely different computers over the power of the internet. Ooh! Spooky! Spooky! Whoa, yes. so indeed! So, for example, this I did. Oh, hold on. Thing happened. This, I did this. Yes, and this is this is me right here. Uh, when you watch more often, you'll probably be able to tell our, our styles apart because we even have different pens that we use. Yes. But um, and oftentimes, if we're ever doing a split screen thing, I'll be on this side, and then Paul will be on this side because I'm right-handed and he is left-handed. It's true. But. Uh, this time we are, because it's a horrible chimera monster, we're doing it at the same time. Let me erase those little marks. Here we go. Okay. Alright, so you got you you got a whale eye you're working on. Body parts, body parts, legs. Okay, I got legs. Howler monkey legs. Okay. So I think I think Spry creature. Yes. So I think, uh, I, I know this, 
we could say that it's arms when it's a howler monkey, but I think it's going to be more threatening if it has the the if it's the front legs, the arms of a howler monkey. Yeah, I agree with that. Because then it's got opposable thumbs, and that's that's extremely terrifying. Yeah, we can do a lot of stuff with thumbs. Yeah. And we have that advantage. Like like most life. things, to you know, weirdly enough. Alright. Uh, yeah, so I drew the eye, and I don't think I can put another one, because it would be on the other side. That's okay. Alright, let me get... So I want another body you need part. Another body part to stitch onto this monstrosity. You got mouth, so it's got another mouth. <laughs> And it is a mouse mouth. A mouse mouth. A mouse mouth. Yes. Now, granted, I don't have animal body parts, so if you need to switch something to be an animal body part, like a claw or a tail, go for it, because I appear to have deleted that list. <laughs> yes. I'm. You know what? We're going to go with a mouse. You, you do a uh, tail. If you do another mouth, you could do it up here and have it be the cute little squeaky nose. Up to I you. Think have two cute mouths. I'm going with the tail. Okay, go for it. Alright. Okay, let's see. I got arms. Okay, we're, so we're getting another pair of arms in here. Turtle arms. Okay. Turtle arms. So, a flipper? Because it's turtle, not tortoise. It's turtle, not tortoise. It's a good point. So, I think I am I'm moving this around a little bit. I think it needs to have... Maybe put a flipper, like, back here. Just a really odd shape. Really odd tick body shape. Yeah, with the body, you wouldn't think it would be able to catch you, but with its multiple kinds of legs. Oh yeah, no, it it I makes mean, it work somehow. You know, it's, it's aquatic. It's, it's tree toppy. It's got the claws. Yeah. This needs to look a little bit more like a fluke. Um. You know, it's like it's like the Jersey Devil. Um, if you actually like he, like see the you know, read the original description of the Jersey Devil, it's nonsensical. <laughs> it's got. Um... I was gonna say I don't know if I can know it. Okay, all right. So when I did a, a cartoony version of it, it was much cuter. But I'm gonna try to look up the actual original one while you while you add in that other foot. Jersey Devil. So, it is described as a flying biped with hooves. Um, okay. So, here, here is from the Wikipedia, which is, you know, as authoritative as you will get with a mythical creature. Um, yes. It is... The most common description is that of a bipedal, kangaroo-like or wyvern-like creature with a horse or goat-like head, leathery bat-like wings, horns, small arms with clawed hands, legs with cloven hooves, and a forked tail. And um, the, the picture of it, which I guess I can try to open up really quick, um, is kind of inexplicable. The most common one. I mean, with the list of, of no, what you not the coaster like something we we drew. Yeah, not that coaster. The Jersey Devil coaster. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that is that. You know what? That does look just like something that we would have. Just yeah, it is. It is inexplicable at artist. best. Like there are much cooler versions of like this one. Um, but, like, that's- that's making it coherent. 
mm -hmm. as opposed to like this old school one, which which looks like like a donkey and if like five other things put together. So we're making our kind of making our that. yeah we're making our own horrifying cryptid here. Yes. <laughs> All right, we both need more body parts. More body parts. More, more. <laughs> okay, you got hair. Okay. Huh. You got rhinoceros hair? They're, they're not really mm, hairy, that's though. Like... Yeah, that's like a fine kind of fur. I will give you the option of, of another body part, and that is legs, which we have plenty of. So, uh, let's well, see. How about, how about this? Hmm. Uh, I mean, just you, go ahead and... Yeah, you get rhinoceros horn it up, go for it. Yeah, that's threatening. That's threatening. Yeah, I think we're running out of body parts to pick from. So now we can, yeah. I think we well, can just- Well, they've given us a lot of legs. Yes. So I don't want to go any further with legs and I keep getting legs. So. Uh, I, I just, so I got a couple. I got pheasant and I also got spider. I, I think we have to go with spider, and I'm thinking, unfortunately, I'm very sorry, people. I'm just gonna have some yeah. compound eye business going on here. Are pheasants flying birds? Yes, they are. They're the ones that have the big, long, like, like long tails that you'll often oh, see, like, yeah. for, like, Robin Hood and whatnot. Okay. I wonder if we give this thing some wings. I think we, I think we can, and we can even like if you want to add like a couple of long feathers back here, you can. But I think yes, I think you know we're really going for you know inescapable air, land, and sea mm -hmm. vibes. Uh, I said about something, I should not talk. So I'm putting in the kind of eyeballs so they're actually more similar to your whale eyeball, which makes it even more upsetting than just a normal yes. compound eyeball would. It's it's uh it's it's like it's got some humanity. Mm hmm It's not just like a completely mindless creatures. So yes, yeah, so I guess we can we can now that we're kind of refining the body parts a little bit. We can maybe uh, try to work out some of the lore. Maybe so, a name. And maybe a name, you know the part that we're best at. Yes. <laughs> I feel like Tick has to be involved. Okay. Because this is a blood drinker, for sure. It wants your blood okay. all the time. Okay, in that case, I'm gonna make... I'm gonna make the tongue worse. You're welcome. <laughs> It wants to taste your blood. And make it a little bit more like needle like. We can give it some little barbs in there. Like that. <laughs> I like that I don't like that. <laughs> I like that I don't like that. Yes, exactly. And I don't know why I'm making that one eye cry, but it seemed appropriate. I think it, yeah. I'm 
Now we're getting some mismatch eyeballs in here. Alright, this is I'm just I'm just uh brainstorming here. So there's there's a deer tick, that's a real thing, right? Yes. What if it's called the fear tick? Oh, I think you just nailed it. It's the fear tick. The fear tick. The fear tick. Oh wait, hold on. I gotta write some font letters. Yeah, just means squiggly. I mean, that works. And so maybe, maybe the um, the various eyes, because they are all different, are the eyes. The dilated eyes of the victims, it just, it's fear and lifeblood it consumed. And so, like, the more eyes it has, the more lives it has taken. Yes. And also, unfortunately for you, the victim the easier it is to see you. Yeah, exactly. And that's, but that's also why some of them look like they're crying, is because it's the, the, the cries of the, oh, you know what? And because it's got this, this freaking, you know, bird mouth tongue thing, it's good at, uh, imitation. I don't know if that's a budgie thing specifically, but... It it, 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 like that one scene in a, uh, Annihilation, it will imitate the voices of those it has eaten. Spoilers for Annihilation, but not really. <laughs> yes, I do still need to see it, but I don't believe that's a spoiler. Cool for this, I know it. Found it. We've only been doing this program for how long? Yeah. <laughs> So okay, now that now that we we know, it it feeds off of the fear of 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 people. It used to be just animals, and that's why maybe there are a few animal eyes in here. Yes, but it's gotten I, a taste of human fear, and it's also just, uh, you know, I. I imagine this thing, and it is not small. It is big. Yeah, I definitely not. When you picture a tick, you know, you have to look real hard. You have to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Mm -hmm. This is not that kind of tick. It's checking you. Oh, yeah. Before it wrecks you. It's... I, I, I'm thinking, like, the size of a bear or something. Yeah. And definitely at least a large dog, and we can certainly say that, you know, as it becomes more belly filled with horrible blood. It's got a tick body, it's gonna expand. So I'm putting in some, like, oddly emaciated ribs to go along with its weird, distended belly.
Is there one of these things? Is there, like, is this a... All right, yeah, yeah, is this a Jersey Devil? Like, is there one Jersey Devil? Is that the thing? Yes. Or... So, okay. the very... So is this a Jersey Devil thing, or is this, like, a Tremors thing? So, um... I think there is probably only one of these. Okay. Um... Now, I could go super weird and deep into cryptid lore if we if you wanted to, but I'll give you um a lot of the like most notorious like cryptids and monsters, um, at least when it comes to like pop culture, are um one-offs. So like the Jersey Devil is supposedly the result of uh Mother Leeds having her 13th child and saying you know, hey, I don't want this baby. If this if this child um, is born, let it be the devil itself. And therefore, it came out of her womb and turned into a horrible creature. Oh, that, right. um, you know, per, per, uh, owned by the devil. And then the um, Mothman is associated with um, a whole bunch of... Uh, was considered a harbinger of calamity in um, Point Point, not Point Park, not Point Breeze, Point Pleasant, in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Um, and it may or and it was also associated with injured cold, who was a man who was like, yeah, I'm an alien, by the way, and um, that thing was kind of running around, and you know, oops. Um, I'm just getting some some weird swollenness in here. And I think it was kind of implied by Injured Cold that it might have escaped from uh, the place where um, he was from. Because Injured Cold would, looked like a person, just didn't entirely act like a person. But the Mothman might have been basically like an escapee from their dimension. So unlike a Sasquatch... Uh or a Bigfoot, which seems to be a species like a Tremor, like the Tremors, you know, because you've got the other subspecies, you have Yeti, and mm -hmm. supposedly um, you've got, you know, the, I think the Flatwoods Monsters is, is plural. Um, they're like little walkie leggy things that appear in the woods. And, um, you know, your Loch Ness monsters and other, you know, oceanic monsters, those are of a species. I think this would be more like one of those freaky one-off monsters. Like, like your Mothman or your Jersey Devil and that some horrifying circumstance created this creature. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. All those listening to paranormal podcasts coming in, coming in hot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, the fear tick. The fear tick. So, out of the various things which I have mentioned, is this an interdimensional creature which escaped? Is it? I feel like there's got to be some supernatural yeah. nonsense going on here. Yeah, I, th I think that's fair. Um, now, did it? Uh, was it summoned here on purpose? Mm, like some kind of ritual. Mm -hmm. Like there was there, um, you know. Yes, I think we can go with that. It was, you know, possibly sell it who doesn't know any better. Right, who wanted an instrument of ultimate fear um, with which to rule the world. And the thing is that, you know, maybe to, for an ironic twist, that's its eye. That's his eye, and that's his intelligence mm -hmm. right there. And that's why that kind of whale eye is, is a part, is that it's actually just, you know, the foolish cultist who you know, decided to bring it into this world. Not realizing that it was just gonna eat him, because, you know, he was fearful too. And it just eats everything that is dominated by fear. Humans are inherently fearful. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's... let's... Boop. 
let's make this. Yeah, let's make that real big. It kind of looks like somebody who doesn't understand what a tardigrade looks like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that. It's like, oh, yeah, it's lumpy and has appendages. <laughs> it's not that. People say that water bears are cute. Mm -hmm. Which is a little strange, but I also get it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we're gonna... a plush for sure. So let's, let's let's document this fear tick. Yes. Okay. So we got the fear tick, and so maybe we can do just a real quick. Um. Alright, so the this some some power hungry man cultist man person. We're gonna be cultists. We it can be a cultist, yeah. You know? It, it could it could it could, it could even be a Tim a Tim Curry in that one Scooby Doo movie <laughs> level cultist. Like it doesn't really matter. But yeah. uh summoned the fear tick to feed off of the fear of others not realizing that like in his in his you know eternal search for power that he was in fact fearful and you know it's not necessarily the fear tick's fault it no, just it has one thing on its mind it's just it's just eats i just want to eat your fear yeah it's just hungry like you know we get it i don't want to know on that fear So then, <gasps> yes, and now it's gone invisible, which may or may not be one of its powers. <laughs> that's some. That's some sequel. That's, that's some sequel stuff. That's some sequel stuff, right? So, who will, who will rise to defeat the fear tick? And I think the fear tick is going to be us. unique in that it is not. If if it's if it grows bigger by eating people who are afraid of it then someone needs to be not afraid of it and maybe needs to be kind to it and helps helps it mm. get home interesting okay so let's see so i'm just going to maybe doodle the uh, the cultist in shadow here Yes, that is deep. We're getting some deep subjects here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stop the artists. So then you know, we could we could if it's if it's a child, maybe a child, you know, learns to not be afraid. It could be um maybe an adult with like maybe you know, an adult, unfortunately, with PTSD, who kind of is able to manage the fear of what happened to them. You like you like it as a child, okay? Maybe maybe the child's like parent or guardian has uh, has PTSD, but the child is the one who ultimately helps the fear tick return to its its dimension. They're exposed to fear a lot because of uh, their parent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and 
you know, they, they help ground their parent, you know, when they're having a flashback or something. And so it's, it, it knows, like, fear isn't everything. And maybe that the fear tick was really just lonely and hungry and didn't know any better. Just a beast. So this, this, this is just the, you know, the shadowy antagonist, and then maybe over here. Yeah, I'm totally in zoned out, just watching you draw instead. Hey, yeah. it happens. <laughs> you know, here and then, you know, the, the kid, you know, doing, doing one of them dynamic things, and we got the, you know, the lurking eyes and beak yes. and hulk of the of the deer tick. The fear tick, sorry. So let me let me can try to get the rest of this this cultist thing. Cause maybe it does maybe the fear tick does start out real small, but eventually it does eat him. What if this cultist guy was another person with PTSD? And maybe someone that... Um, that our adult protagonist knew. And knew was acting weird. And that was that was the thing that he did in order... Because he couldn't actually... He didn't want to actually deal with his trauma. He decided to summon a, a fear-eating monster instead and take its pain out. Ah, uh, to... to to, in theory, eat his fear so he doesn't have any fear. Yeah, and also, you know... Didn't work out. You know, give the... Make make it... Consume the, uh... Consume the... You know, also just to, to feel powerful. You know? Yes. Because... I know, conquered fear. Yes. I conquered fear! I don't know what's going on with this dude, but I, I, I can already tell you, he's gnarly looking. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. That is a, that is a face that's seen fear. Mm hmm This man will literally summon an in extra dimensional fear tech and go to therapy. <laughs> and y'all, that's not the way. Nah, like. You just, you gotta. You just, this is how you don't deal with your fears and anxieties. I you don't deal with your fears and anxieties. Your fears and anxieties will deal with you. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, I didn't mean to make him make him all sketchy looking, but I think it actually works in his favor. Yeah.
friends, the lesson of the fear tick is to is to just take care of yourself and you know be more empathetic to yourself. We all have hard times. Don't let fear rule you, but also, you know, don't let avoiding it rule you. Fear is natural. Take care of your fear. Yeah. Fear is meant to be instructive. Obviously, you don't want it to paralyze your life, but it's not inherently bad. Yeah, this is this is very different totally from the... Uh, yeah. From, from Hot Bod. <laughs> Hot Bod was pretty, uh... uh... Entry. Yeah. So just, just horrible. Oh, you know what? There was some, some, some body positive video. Yes. Yeah. I would. See, that one was certainly more wholesome, and definitely you could like. It's probably like PG thirteen. This one's. This one's not. I bet this has got some like gnarly scenes of both gore, and uh, and maybe drug abuse. Yeah, just the lankiest, just god-awful hair on this guy. Yeah, that's not washed hair. I was going to change the hand position to something else, but I'm not going to bother anymore. <laughs> also, I forgot there's a finite, finite erase on this bad boy. <laughs> looking nails, not taking care of himself, probably hasn't slept. Scared. Very, very scared. It's definitely pr pr this is Probably the gnarliest looking dude I've ever drawn. And then... Super artistic interpretation. <laughs> yeah. I probably should have done a sketch layer for this, but uh, okay, I'll, I'll switch. Whatever. Bum bum bum. It's my United States of whatever. It's our United States. Yeah.
That's right. Bird, bird feet. Bird feet. Feet. Bird feet. Bird feet. Oh, yes, horns. Can't forget the horns. And we'll we'll not have the extra eye over here yet, because it has the we're gonna pretend this is the unabsorbed version. Yes, we unknowingly made the spoiler third act version. really slapped together a pretty solid lore. <laughs> Wait, yeah. <laughs> a pretty solid, solid, solid story. And, you know, very, very small amount of time. It's really a wonder that these overlords just don't. Yeah, I, like, what is, they what really is what their... We, we're owning it. God, what is their major malfunction? I mean, really. Like... We have killed it more than once, and yet nothing. So what's one of our protagonists' names? We have multiple protagonists going on here. I think our cultist name should be something actually pretty normal, like Jerry. <laughs> yeah. It's Gerald. Use my full name. It's <laughs> It's Gerald! My mother named me Gerald! Whoa, alright, dude. Okay. Calm down. I am calm! For some reason, I'm feeling like uh, so. Is this is this a little girl? Yes. Okay, I was thinking maybe like Katya or Katarina or something. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a Russ. <laughs> a Russ. I almost thought Horatio. <laughs> Horatio. Yeah, you know what? I like that better. Mm -hmm. It's 
So, anyway, so we have Katya, Horatio, Gerald, Jerry. <laughs> Horatio, he didn't really have a chance to, to see his daughter for a while while he was serving in Afghanistan. You know, multiracial kid already feeling like an outsider. Jerry's definitely white. <laughs> he's he's Jerry, yeah. Jerry's not happy about everything. <laughs> Jerry's not happy about the state of America. Yes. I was supposed to be treated like a hero. A hero, god damn it. And nah, man. Sorry, dude. Doesn't always work like that, bro. She was having trouble connecting to his daughter since Lucia raised Katya for so long. Oh, I see where I messed up. I see where I messed up. All you have to do is see where you mess up and then you can fix it. It's no big deal. Fear, folks. No fear. <laughs> That's right. No fear, like that t-shirt, until there's one fear. <laughs> and then it's feast time. Yes. Oops. We want this one. We don't want. We want this one. <laughs> oh, don't do that. And it's just some random bits of gore coming off, and yet Katya is not afraid. Katya sees a very lonely, sad creature. Even season itself. Mm You know, that, you know, a kid, bless her heart, in the non-Southern way, <laughs> she, you know, decided to not be afraid. She saw how scared Daddy was and wanted to make sure that he could learn to not be afraid.
Gerald used to, used to be, you know, a little weird, but he was much nicer. You know, you met him a few times with his dad. Maybe they served in the same unit or something. But he just he just got weirder lost. and weirder and more and more scared. to some extent the fear of fear broke him yeah The, the big lesson in all of this is, uh, you know, the VA should be better supported. <laughs> That's the yeah. <laughs> the VA, you know, uh, mental mental health should be should be better supported. Really, you know, start to strengthen our, our social uh, social safety net. So that way we don't have people who. Um, could have could have been okay with proper treatment, s summoning interdimensional um, creatures of hunger. Yo, just don't do it. Yeah, it's it's you know. I can't say I've heard of many times where it worked out fine. I feel like more often than not, it horrifically backfires. So that's just you know that's just a pro tip right there. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Don't be a Jerry. Don't don't summon interdimensional creatures. Just you know, we know the system's kind of rigged. Just ask for help, okay? Okay. Let me try to fix this. This thumb. Yeah, I'm this hair. Thumbs. Finish. Do some, uh, since we started late, let's do a little bit of coloring. Not a whole lot, we can do a little bit. chat how about getting help and an interdimensional creature it's a free emotional support animal right there you know what mossifer you bring up a very good point um so i believe that if eldritch beings are your friends so i would say if you have enough um control over your mana and also yourself then they can absolutely be your friends um i mean it's like any other kind of animal you know you can certainly a lot of people have it within their abilities to befriend tigers and make them into their, you know, support animals. But not everyone's maybe qualified to do so. I think Katya here, absolutely, that eldritch being could be her best friend. And maybe that's what happens in the sequels. Yeah. But Jerry here obviously could not handle that responsibility. Although now I just like, man, what if... What if I had an Eldritch being as my friend? <laughs> what if? What if? 
What a, what what a, am I missing out on? Yeah, what a, what a different existence that would be. Eldritch beings are your friends. Eldritch beings, you know what? Make friends with your eldritch beings. Someday they might save you from yourself. I just, you know, personal advice, make sure that you get a non-Euclidean pen to put them in. Um, they don't do well in Euclidean pens because they can always escape from them. That's a very funny joke for people who knew what, know what non-Euclidean spaces are. <laughs> yeah, you, there's a, a Euclid uh, avenue here. Yeah, you know, yes, that too. And uh, that's all I know. <laughs> I would say, like, if the if the um. Hold on, let me Google something. Go for it. Um, I would say Cthulhu would probably not be a good um, eldritch being to summon as your friend. I feel like Cthulhu would mess more things up than be a good emotional support. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna erase around them. I just thought, hey, look, let's do some weird artsy stuff. Some colors. Let me, let's do, let's do the little wavely, the, w the wiggly bits. Okay, that joke was pretty funny. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I make jokes for myself a lot. <laughs> and, and sometimes I will explain them. I get to learn things on this show. Yes. <laughs> uh, Non-Euclidean spaces... Um, and shapes are ones which basically don't make sense to us. Um, they're like fourth dimensional and whatnot. I'm not even good at explaining it. <laughs> but it's complicated. It's very it's it's too complicated for us to understand. Um, but not complicated enough to effectively pen one of these non-Euclidean beasts. Um, okay, I'm sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna start over. <laughs> Select all delete selection. Okay. Let me, let me make it real big here. There is a song on the soundtrack by Deer Tech, by the way. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. You want to start putting putting the fear tick in the corner again? You did pretty. You had a pretty good font last time. 
Oh yeah, we do this. Phone red. I feel like I keep messing him up, but that's okay. It's my slogan for this show. I don't know, but that's okay. <laughs> that should that's a great slogan. Again. Yeah. Pretend that this was all on purpose. <laughs> Look, it's like scratch art. Yay! Just eyedropper. Let me, let me let me get some of that pink you got there. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> Good stuff. Now we're just quietly drawing. <laughs> we came up with a story, we're done now. We're just so invested. We're, we've become too invested in whatever the heck this is. The fear tech. We're almost done. We're almost done. Yeah. And you know, there's always the artist thing of, ah, let me fix it. Wait, no. Okay, it's fixed. Wait, no. Okay, let me fix it. Wait, no. <laughs> Yay, perfectionism. Yeah. We started late, so we're like, we're, you know, like, oh, no, it's, it's cool if we go over. <laughs> it's allowed now. It's, it's allowed. <laughs> All right. Paul, do you think, did you think All you right, wrapped yes, it up? Yes, I'm done. I'm Absolutely. okay with putting my pen down. I'm, I'm okay with stopping, too. I think this looks Man, awesome. I think this is a very good horror movie. A lot of people just got into it for, like, just the gore and the horrifying creature and the way that it, like, 
imitates the noises of those it has killed, but you know, and it's, that's cool, y'all. But that, there's also a moral in there's there. There's also there's also a message. You know, kind of like the Baba Duke. Mm -hmm. Don't have kids. <laughs> oh wait. <laughs> I I don't know. It's been a while since I've seen the Baba Duke. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. I believe we have sl we have slaked the lust of the evil overlords with the fear tick. Oh, no. oh man, that's good stuff. Uh, thank you for coming and being patient with us. We were not killed by a tornado, so that's good. Yes, that's great news. <laughs> that's it's so good news. The uh, the next stream that uh, I am doing for the library will be next Tuesday at eight p.m. and it's going to be trivia murder party two. Spooky. Spooky. Yeah, I blew out the mic. Mike, I'm sorry. Um, then we're gonna have a, a little bit of a break. Um, because you can look forward to like a whole a week straight of stuff um, starting November 8th for International Games and Gaming Week. So uh, we'll be doing this again uh, that week. Uh, in the meantime, you can still absolutely uh, buy slots for tarot card readings. I'm doing those through the end of the month. Those are privately done over Zoom. Do not show up the library like somebody did. Please read the instructions. Those are that's fifteen dollars for a half hour tarot reading with me, happening uh, this Saturday, next Saturday, and Monday. Uh, so said it last time, but uh, they're very good. I've gotten them. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. And you know what you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> I would. I would hope so. Either way, it's not going to me. It's going to the library. Uh, so again. Um, Go to moonlighter.org to look for uh, buying a 15-minute Zoom tarot reading from me. And then, this upcoming Tuesday, we have Trivia Murder Party 2, which is a trivia um, jackbox game uh, where the jack life-altering readings, yo, says uh, Nanas from the chat. Well, uh, thank you. I like, to, I like to think that I help. If not, I'm usually funny. <laughs> <laughs> I can. That would be an, an Mossover. That would be a situation which I would confirm whether or not an Eldritch being is your friend. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um. Then, like I said, after that, we'll have a bit of a break. So, thank you for joining us for Stump the Artist. Stay safe. Have a happy Halloween. Don't let the fear tick get you. Hey, stay spooky, y'all. <laughs> 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 Laughter. <laughs>